Hi scholars, I'm Mrs. Klein from Archway Scottsdale and I want to welcome you to Virtual Athenaeum. Hello, when you think about fighting a war, what weapons come to mind? Right now, the world is fighting a war against a tiny unseen enemy, germs. Let's take a moment to think about all of the amazing things that our bodies can do. We breathe, we digest food, we move, we think, and so much more. However, sometimes there are tiny organisms that try and invade our bodies. These organisms are called germs. We call them microorganisms because you can only see them if you use a microscope. Not only are they tiny, but they're everywhere. There are different kinds of germs and different germs cause different problems. These little bugs look cute, but they're anything but friendly. Bacteria cause infections like ear infections or sore throats. Viruses give us colds and flus. Protozoa give us tummy bugs. And fungi causes problems like warts and athlete's foot. Unfortunately, all of these germs can spread very easily from person to person by the things we touch, by coughing or sneezing, and even by friendly handshakes and hugs. Think of all of the things that you touch in just one day. Can you name a few? Just to make this video, I had to touch my phone, my computer, the stand that my phone is on, and my table. We touch door handles, faucets, refrigerators, toys, toilets, TVs, computers, and the list goes on and on and on. With so many germs around us, it feels like a battle we could never win. That would be bad news. But wait, that is not the case at all. I have good news. We have some very powerful weapons to fight this war against germs. We can build up a healthy immune system by getting lots of sleep, eating healthy foods, and moving our bodies as much as possible. Jumping jacks, push-ups, and stretching are all great ways to move your body. Another weapon in our battle against germs is washing our hands. Washing your hands is like putting on armor. You have heard your mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and aunts and uncles and teachers and Athenaeum staff and big brothers and sisters say it over and over. Wash your hands, use soap. They must really love you to give you such good advice. One of the best things you can protect yourself from germs with is good old fashioned soap and hot water. Here's why washing our hands is so important in our war against germs. Earlier, I poured some water and oil into this container. What do you notice? The oil and water are separate, aren't they? Oil and water don't mix. Your skin is made up of oils and germs stick to the oils on your skin. Since oil and water don't mix, what do you think would happen to those germs if you just rinsed your hands with water? Nothing, that's what would happen the germs would just stay on your skin. Watch what happens when I add some liquid soap to my jar and give it a good shake. Now the oil and water are mixed together. You can see that they've combined. The molecules and soap have two very different ends. One end of the soap is hydrophilic. Do you know what hydro means? It refers to water. Philic is the Greek word, comes from the Greek word philos, which means to love. So one end of the soap molecule loves water. You can see the hydrophilic part of the molecule, the part that loves water, here around the border of the soap molecule. The other end of the soap molecule is hydrophobic. To have a phobia means to be afraid of or repelled by something. The hydrophobic ends of the molecule attach to the oils. That's the germs. This allows the bad germs to be washed away when your hands are rinsed after using hot water and soap. We need to wash our hands often. Some especially good times to wash our hands are before we eat, after using the bathroom, after we play outside, and after we cough or sneeze. To do a really good job, you should wash with soap for 20 seconds or more. To help, I sing a little song while I wash my hands. I sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star because it's exactly 20 seconds long. If you want an extra excuse to wash your hands, you can join me in finger painting some germs. All right, let's get started. If you have finger paint already made at home, you don't have to make any more. But if you don't, here's an easy recipe you can make 
with flour, water, dish soap, and food coloring. This recipe makes quite a bit of finger paint, but you can easily cut it in half if you think you don't need that much. So you're gonna mix one cup of flour, one cup of water, and one cup of dish soap together in a bowl or container. Remember, if you wanna make less, you can use one half cup of flour, one half cup of water, and a half cup of dish soap. Then you're gonna stir it so it's nice and smooth and there's no more lumps in it. All right, once you make sure it has no more lumps, what I did before we color it is I split it up into four containers to make red, orange, and yellow, and we're gonna make blue together today. Um, so you split it up before you color it if you'd like to make multiple colors. Now that I've got them separated, I'm gonna add three drops of my blue food coloring. And then we're gonna stir it up. And depending on how dark or light you want your color to be of your paint, you can add more or less. All right, so it's kind of a light blue. I'm gonna make it a little darker. Um, if you do wanna make it darker, add three drops at a time, stirring in between until you get the color that you want. And you can do this with all the other colors as well, about the same amount of paint. All right, now that you've got your colors mixed, you're ready to finger paint. I've got my paper, finger paints ready. I'm also gonna have Q-tips in case you don't wanna use your fingers to finger paint. These make great little paint brushes. These are the germs I'm going to try to paint today. Grab your supplies and join me. Now we wash our hands for 20 seconds or more with hot water and soap. Remember to keep fighting that war on germ scholars by washing your hands often and keeping your body healthy. Thank you scholars for joining us today at Virtual Athenaeum. Have a great day.